be me, DMing a modified D20 that my party fondly refers to as LSD and D, have giant randomization charts, not uncommon to get dumped off into other towns countries planets realities. Party has a human sorcerer, dwarf assassin constables player, orc shaman, and a vampire necromancer. Party has been trying to escape a prison keep for the past three sessions. Dwarf was stuck in his first floor cell ass naked for almost two sessions because his guard was extremely lazy and refused to get off his ass long enough to get tricked. Eventually chucked a rock and knocked him out, which resulted in the only man with the keys to his cell being knocked out 20 feet away. He doesn't think things through very well. Sorcerer had frozen the lock and shattered it on floor 2, was currently hiding in a broom closet from the prison as he released on his floor since it turns out convicted criminals lie about their intentions. Vampire had seduced and killed her guard on floor 3, was currently charming as many other prisoners as she could to amass her army. Not doing great since everyone else on the floor is equally dangerous. Orc on 4 older Miss Shap as usual minus 3 inch modifier and wild magic plus a combination of custom feats that make him Miss Shap more frequently which caused him to switch places with the nearest bird. Which resulted in him being crammed in the messenger pigeon coop on the roof. Dwarf asks Jesus for help jokingly, have him roll a d100 for giggles cuz fuck it this game is a mess. You know what he rolled. Tall man in white robes walks in front of his cell, undoes the lock. Waves and disappears as soon as he leaves his line of sight. Dwarf instantly converts and promises to become a cleric. Random Jesus becomes a running gag for the rest of the session. Dwarf makes a point to make a d100 roll every time his turn comes around for some divine intervention. Only 1 out of 100 chance why not. Fucker gets it 3 more times before they even leave the prison. Dwarf and the vamp are the only players able to do anything. Both the casters are stuck in wooden boxes and won't come out. Dwarf gets off his ass and steals stuff off the KO'd guard, gets a nice club and a helmet, none of the clothes fit. The butt naked dwarven assassin who found Jesus proceeds towards the daunting task of surviving long enough to go up a flight of stairs without his chronic stupidity killing him. Stairs are by the break room, guards are idly hanging around drinking, dwarf needs a distraction. Makes a deal with the also naked old beggar that was across the hall from him, lets him out in exchange for salvation. Old man goes streaking past the break room, does a 180 and runs back while Dwarf pretends he is still locked up. All the guards outside of the room chase him down. Dwarf reaches the stairs unseen, gets up to the second floor in time to see the chaos. All the prisoners are out and the sorcerer covered the floor in a nice layer of ice to protect himself. Dwarf grabs the alarm rope and pulls it, rings a bell in the guard room signaling an escape on floor 2. Guards pile out of the stairway and wipe out on the ice. Some unlucky ones slide over to where the prisoners are fighting, others are scrambling to stay on their feet. Dwarf tucks and lays on his extremely hairy chest, starts penguin sliding along the side of the wall to scoot past the mayhem. Lucky Jesus rolls gives him a helping hand from one of the empty cells. Sorcerer peeks out and sees him, sneaks out of the closet and manages to keep his footing. Both use the cell bars to keep their footing and scoot towards the fast stairs to get to the third floor. Managed to not die though the dwarf took a bolt in the butt. The momentum moved him 5 feet closer to the stairs so he didn't complain much. Finally reach the stairs and get the fuck out. Third floor. Actually not a madhouse for once. Vampire has seduced a couple of the stupider prisoners. That being a troll and a pyromaniacal shaman. Group made the wise choice of not letting out any of the other tier 3 prisoners. Go up to the 4th floor. All the cells are slabs of steel with runes and magic sealing them shut. Definitely not letting out anyone here. However they can't tell which door the orc is behind, and they don't know he is on the roof. Every door is the wrong door. Dwarf prays. Jesus can't help you now. Party argues over the doors for half an hour before they decide on the one with the green gemstone in the middle. Green is the orc east color. Obviously that must be it. Dwarf figures out the puzzle. Doesn't know what the runes mean. All he could decipher is they kept talking about sleep and houses. 20 seconds later the party is scrambling onto the roof to get away from the shoggoth they just released, minus the troll who didn't react quick enough. Get to the roof. Orc finally comes out of the coop with a pigeon he named Harold. Party doesn't ask nor care. Need to get off the roof. Sure as hell can't go down a floor. Shaman doesn't have time for little stuff like creatures that shouldn't exist. He's too damn stupid to take an insanity check. Goes down there to try his luck. Tries to cover it with water tentacle things live in water, they must like it. Miss Shaps has hoped, instantly grows a full beard, not the desired result but not complaining. Shagath didn't notice. 
Tries again. Dwarf tries to help and Jesus cures his bolt wound and gives him a bathrobe. More water. Another mishap. Shoggoth grows antlers. Shoggoth noticed that and sees food. One more try. Casts and mishaps. Target suffers reverse of intended spell. The Shoggoth instantly loses all of the liquid in its body and dries up into what could best be described as a really big block of uncooked ramen noodles. That works. Party goes down two floors. Pyramansa melts all the ice along with half of the people fighting. Gets a bolt in the heart for his trouble. Dwarf prays. Jesus just waves from down the hall. Prisoners and guards set aside their differences to go after the nut jobs who just came down the stairs. Orc tries to summon a plant of some sort. Can't remember. What's important is that as usual he miscasts. Costa and party transported to another plane of existence. Great. Roll for the setting realistic time modern. Okay so that defaults them to earth by our logic. After a multitude of rolls the dipsticks end up inside of a large building that sells a little bit of everything. Naturally they appear in Walmart. More specifically the electronics section. Dwarf instantly lays claim to an Xbox 360 new at the time due to the raw power he can feel radiating off of it. Employee comes by, sees the party, people at Walmart, midget in a bathrobe, seems about standard, slutty pale chick, must be another emo kid, Asian man in a big black and green robe, Potter fanboy, large green monster with a staff and a pigeon, looks over, sees a wow advertisement board, a uh, LARPA, nice outfit kid, how long did it take? Shaman just stares, employee gets the memo and walks off, dwarf is collecting more 360s, Rest of the party splits up to find other things. This magical shop has everything. Vampire gets an even edgier outfit. Sorcerer finds some wands and an axe for the dwarf. Shaman finds some healthy lifestyle books. Everyone is content. Shaman goes for the door. Sets off the theft alarm. Party panics. Makes a break for it. Shaman throws a spell at the door guard greeter. Makes him 47 years younger. Greeter is now middle age. Party sprints through the parking lot. Running from the brightly colored constructs that seem to move erratically around the area. Runs out of the lot and into the woods. Survive on Little Caesars and stray animals for a week before they get ported back to their world from another miscast. Dwarf becomes filthy rich selling his amazing shock stone powered creation to his kin. Massive tomes are now compiled into tiny metal chips. Sorcerer discovers the ones can only create dim light. But the shock stones inside are remarkably efficient. Renames them Duraspals. Vampire starts a new fashion line based on what she saw, revolutionizes her kind's style, now involves copious amounts of glitter. Shaman goes vegan. Look, honestly, see anything written by Felix, I think is fucking gold. I love it. I really, I really get into it. And uh, it's been a few weeks since I've done, like, you know, one of his stories. And I, I think I've said it before. At the end of one of these, I always gravitate towards certain writers, like Soggy and Felix. And I just really enjoy the way they do things, you know? I just I, I just do. I, I, I can't help myself. So, like, um... If you have any other, like, you know, different gliders that you really enjoy, definitely comment them down below and I'll definitely check them out. Um, I just love this type of shit. I honestly see the thought of, like, a D&D group mixed with, like, Bill and Ted. Fuck me, that's great. I love that type of shit. Like, you know, I'm, I don't know. Maybe that's just me, though. I'm sure you guys enjoy it, too. You know? So, uh, look, as always, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as I say, if you've got any stories yourself, comment them down below. If it's a link, it'll end up in the spam folder, so I'll just check the spam folder to find them. And, uh, look, subscribe, and I might just give you a bluey joey. Who knows? And uh, I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!